We are always striving to find the absolute best of the open source office applications. And of course, there are a number of different contenders that are pretty good and easily installable on Linux. One of those that has taken storm, however, has a few privacy things that we might want to consider, and we're going to talk about that today. Thanks for checking out this video. Well, today I want to talk a little bit about some of the privacy concerns I might have with OnlyOffice. Now, of course, I've done some videos in the past where I have said that there are some fundamental flaws with the application. Now, OnlyOffice does a few things really, really, really well. Mostly dealing with online collaboration and things like that, OnlyOffice does work pretty good. There are a lot of benefits to it, particularly if you're trying to stay within Microsoft's proprietary docx format, because don't forget, it doesn't actually handle the open source document type well. And that in and of itself to me is kind of problematic that we're talking about an office software that's a free and open source office suite that does not handle the open source document type files well. Very interesting in and of itself. But today I want to talk about some privacy issues that have come up because somebody had dropped this on our matrix server and I want to dig into it. Now this deals with apps. This is like phone apps. This is not dealing with the software application itself. But it begs a couple of questions that we might want to look into. So this is from exodusprivacy.eu.org. This is an organization that's seeking to look at privacy concerns inside of phone apps. So inside of this, you can see that it has five trackers and 24 permissions. Now, to be completely fair for the permissions, most of these permissions are set the way that they are so that you can utilize the online components of the Office Suite, which is online document collaboration. Now, I have not played around a whole lot with the application other than to say that, yes, it will work in an online account and allow you to make some uh, document changes and share them across a couple networks, including Office, um, like Office 365 and Google and Nextcloud and other things like that. But let's go ahead and first look at this and determine if this is certainly an issue. The first big issue is with the trackers themselves. We have Facebook and Google Analytics. So in and of itself, the application is taking your data and sending it up to Google and Facebook servers. We also have Facebook login, which presumably allows you to log into your only office account utilizing Facebook and the Google login information. Is it there? No, it actually doesn't even look like it has the Google login information there. That actually allows you to uh, create the account. We'll talk about the Google integration here in a bit. As far as the permissions, um, I don't see the permission issue as nearly as big as some people have because we're talking about a cloud connected office suite. And it does that job pretty well. Access the network state, access Wi-Fi state, authenticate accounts. Obviously, if you need to log into an online cloud account, it needs access to the network, the wireless and account status. The camera to take pictures and video. Um, this is probably not as much. I don't see a person including a selfie of themselves inside of your document. Download without notification and foreground service and get accounts. Find all of the connected accounts on the device. I do find that one problematic because it's not like the, the phone has the capability of having an only office account inside of the device account setup option. So it is probing those different accounts. Having full internet access and manage accounts. Managing accounts, I can see a problem. Internet access, I don't. Manage external storage is fine. Read external storage, that is fine. Post notifications, okay. I don't have any issue. Receive boot completed so it can run at startup. I do have a problem with this. Why is an office application running on your phone when it first starts up? Using biometric hardware is a little bit odd, unless you're talking about utilizing a fingerprint as part of an authentication protocol, but otherwise I don't see why it needs biometrics. Um, presumably it is using it to log into the accounts. I don't know. 
A wake lock, prevent the phone from sleeping is fine. Write external storage is fine because you're talking about documents. Receive, bind, get, install, refer service. Read, write, dynamic receiver, not export, and write. So overall, for a suite designed to collaborate online on cloud-connected services with a document suite, that is not nearly as frightening sounding as it might look other than the fact that it has two separate analytics system, three, uh, three separate ones, Google Crash Analytics, Crash Reporting, Analytics uh, for both Facebook and Google. That is definitely not something which claims itself to be a privacy-focused office suite. Now, comparing this to the LibreOffice Viewer, which has zero trackers and one permission, huge limitation. The default option of this is just to view documents, not to write with them, and certainly not collaboration. Although the current version has an experimental feature where you can actually edit those documents and save them to any available storage, which could be a NextCloud or other cloud-connected system. It's just not embedded inside the app itself. So you can apparently do this without collecting a lot of analytics data and things like that. So next, so we want to have a brief look at the legal notices. No, I'm, dude, stop. Leave me alone. I completely hate when these sites have these chat boxes that show up. I'm sorry. If I wanted to communicate with you, I would probably do so. So here are the various notices and terms of use. And if you come on down, they have a separate Google uh, Google user data policy because embedded in the application is the ability to sign into a Google Docs account. So they have a separate policy guiding that. And then they have a only office privacy policy. Now, these actually load up on their own suite here. So it is asking me uh, a name used for collaboration. So we'll go ahead and get rid of those on both of these. Now, looking at their general privacy policy, they talk about the privacy is important to us. It's created this statement to let you know about our firm's commitment to your privacy and full compliance with the GDPR. And so that really is what their purpose is. Now, here's the information they collect. So they're going to ask your first and last name, email address, and a phone number. So the, apparently they are defaulting to a two-factor authentication. And it would appear from this, I have not tried it, it would appear from this that you have to give them a phone number if you are going to use one of their accounts. Now, to be completely fair, you can use the software without their account but it will actually annoy you from time to time because it's kind of becoming borrowing from some of the like googly type trends here. Hey, sign up for the account. Get more with your account. Things like that. So the data is collected when you enter it uh, or upload it to your own. Uh, they also collect IP address, location based on IP address, operating system and internet browser data and hardware specifications such as screen size and other specifications they collect to other data and then it says refer to third parties um, third party policies or follow this guy here let's go ahead and pull that up we'll look at that in a moment i actually i didn't neglect to look at that in my video prep so we'll have a look at what that looks like in a second oh that just takes us to google's tracking code overview page so it's sending us to a google page about third party services and trackers so if you choose not to register you can still use the website anonymously uh, but you will not be able to access areas that require registration technical data is recorded automatically when you visit the site so just the fact that i have pulled up this information this document just reading this privacy policy because it is utilizing their help.onlyoffice.co they are already logging my operating system my browser my ip address doing location calls and i haven't even logged in that's what they're saying uh, we also collect certain categories of personal information about users from other sources in particular financial and or transaction detail from our payment provider to check out located in the united states uh, netherlands and romania this is necessary to process transactions third-party services like google which provide information about you when you link connect or log in your account with your Google account and we receive information such as your Google email and profile from that service. This only occurs if you are using Google account to log in. This information varies and is controlled by Google or as authorized by you via your privacy settings in your Google account. 
And then when you interact with social media, like, share, tweet, plus one, et cetera, et cetera, of course, how we use the data, they're going to use it for a better user experience, investigate performance issues, make only office better, and to comply with the law, i.e., has so-and-so written a document? Hmm. So they say they may share non-personal summary information with partners or other third parties. However, we will not share any inf individual customer information outside the contracted partners and third parties without re first receiving your written approval. So if we're working with a contracted partner, we will share your data. If we're if we're uh, we're sharing the information outside of our contracted third parties, we're going to get your permission first. That's what they say. So they do not sell or uh, users personal data. The system may send you tips about using it. Uh, again, this is if they have your email address. How's the data used? This is fairly standard. Uh, but they also do have a very nice, uh, if you're, you request your data to be deleted, it's just deleted within 60 days. If your account goes inactive for 180 days, it will be removed 60 days later. And you cannot restore the data. So they say that it definitely gets rid of it. So that's actually really good. So you have various rights to control and use processing your data and other information. This means you are entitled to request us uh, to take certain actions at any time free of charge. They have the data portability right. These are all things dealing with like GDPR and other things like that. Uh, so um, that's all, all the information that's common with any, any given uh, system. Here's underage data. They don't uh, knowingly collect information on a person under 16. They have public use information, any information about that they find from the data collectors, of course. Links to other sites, obviously, any linked third party site, obviously. And then if here's your cookie uh, stuff, essentials, functionality, and performance and analytics. So these cookies collect information about how users operate with their site. We use Google Analytics cookies to identify areas and improvements, such navigation and other user experience and marketing campaigns. And then, of course, check the third-party data. Now, they do have a statement here on what they do to protect your data from data breaches. These, for the most part, are pretty good. They have strengths, uh, password strength requirements, physical access control, uh, brute force resistant staff passwords, they have um, strong cipher encryption for all mediums containing personal data, video surveillance and activity logs of their physical locations, 2FA, enabled by default, end-to-end -end encryption on everything. Um, sadly, they are using AWS, so I hope that they have secured their AWS S3 colander. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and then, of course, trusted email and then other safety measures. And then about this, they are using AWS for file hosting. And they have EU, Germany, uh, Oregon regions, and Asia uh, Pacific and Singapore for their individual information and Google Analytics. So they do actually, uh, they are not the worst privacy policy, but they're still collecting way more information than they should. Now, to be clear, there is a website, there is an application, and there is a web-based uh, component, basically like a Google Docs type thing. And that's where we can get lost somewhere in the mix of all of this uh, as to what, you know, if I'm installing the Office suite, what do I get? If I'm, in, if I'm using the cloud-based system, what do I get? If I'm using the app, obviously, what do I get? Now, here is our separate statement on their Google data policy. This one has not actually been updated in a long time. And of course, this is applicable only if you connect your Google account either to their online system or to their desktop client software where you can set up a Google account. And if you do that, you will have the ability to give them uh, a lot of information, including imp importing your contacts, which means if, if somebody else has your phone number in their Google account and they log into this and give the account information over, then OnlyOffice now has your first and last name to display a unique username to OnlyOffice accounts. They have your email address if that's in there. So this is one of those cases where I think that Google and other online services like this need to take a lot more proactive stance to say, hey, I don't want some 
you know, Joe Blow that doesn't care about privacy as much as I have, if you've just picked up my phone number at a conference and connected this into your account and now you're uploading all your contacts, I don't want my contact information associated with Own the Office, but it's very clear from this that they already have it. I find that to be a serious privacy issue. So you can choose to synchronize your Google Drive, of course, and other things, of course, if you're collect connecting your Google account to this, it does make sense that all this stuff is, is embedded into here. All this to say that there are certainly some, some security issues that we have in mind, and I myself wanted to have a brief look. So I installed Wireshark on my laptop where I'm actually using, or I, I don't really actively use it, but I have tested only Office with that. And I booted this guy up. And what I noticed is that only Office, even if I'm not making a connection, if I have not created an account, only Office is constantly pinging and keeping an active connection with only Office's AWS server. It is always doing that. On the first time only Office is booted on the system, it seems to make a Google Analytics data call. So it apparently even the desktop application on Linux does appear to making be making a Google Analytics data call when you first boot it up, logging my IP address and information about my computer. So this is a free and open source application which has trackers embedded in it, which is sharing my information with Google, and I did not consent to that other than downloading the software and installing it, which might be somewhere in the policies there by downloading and, and installing it. I can't remember if I read a terms of service or agreed to one when I did that. But here is a free and open source desktop suite, which is making an automatic connection to Google Analytics as a desktop application, and then keeping an active connection to an AWS server, despite the fact I am not connected to it all on Linux, and I believe that's the Flatpak version. So uh, take that with whatever grain of salt that you would like. So I do have some serious concerns, whereas when I booted up LibreOffice, no data collect connections. The only pinging that I saw at all is when I go to save a document, it made a, a local DNS server to test if there is a Samba server connected to my computer to see if I want to save something on a network or connect connected location, but there's no other third party system that showed up in my list. Whereas only office appears to be making connections to Google and AWS. So just because something is a free and open source software does not mean it is absolutely free of any form of trackers. And from a company that even with their phone application is going to be embedding Facebook and Google analytics into the mobile app version, I do have some serious concerns. So add this to one more reason I am not interested in only office. Now, that being said, of course, this is not just a hate video on only office. They do some things really well. I love the fact how well that th this really is a good alternative to Google Docs and to uh, Microsoft Office and that you can truly do a lot of good collaboration online without connecting a uh, Nextcloud server to it. But again, if privacy really is what you're focusing on the most, only Office may not be the best way to go because they're still sending the same data to the same groups as before. Whereas you can spin up a Nextcloud instance, use Calibora with LibreOffice and be free of all of this data tracking and not have to worry about uh, what they're doing with their setup. So I thought that was a fascinating video. Let me know if you were aware that only office was collecting this type of data. If does this sway you for or against using it? I am not telling anybody to stop using only office. I just want people to be aware of the data only office is collecting and it's all been in the open. All we did here is we looked at only offices own services and uh, read their privacy statements. So keep that in mind as you are considering your office suites. This is another reason I personally prefer LibreOffice, uh, but um, uh, to each your own, as long as you are aware of what it's doing, I have no problem with somebody who uses only office. I think it overall is a great software suite. It is still coming of age. And uh, I look forward to seeing what they do. I would love it if they could come out and say, yeah, this was a mistake. Let's go ahead and take the, uh, the data analytics out of this. Let's not worry about as much. Let's just rely more on our user feedback to get information rather than a bunch of data analytics. 
With that, guys, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Let me know which is your favorite office suite in the comments and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video or hey, hit that dislike button if you didn't. That's fine with me as well. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.